Hey, what's good, gamers? It's Curly here. Thank you for joining me as always, and I appreciate all the birthday wishes. It was good to take a break and get away for a little bit, but I definitely missed you guys, so I gotta come back and post another video. This one is in high demand. On my last video, I posted about the burning killer exclusive crashing through the floor. Someone had posted a comment saying, make a video about auto trade bots and the inflation of keys. So I think this topic is pretty deep, so I'm gonna basically split it into two. I could do multiple videos on both of these topics, but I figured I would do the first one on trade bots. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down and look at it with you guys. What trade bots mean, how long they've been around, how things are changing, is this good, is this bad? I think honestly, it just depends on your perspective, what kind of trader you are, where you're coming from, how much trading you're doing, and definitely just evolution in general. You look at any industry within the last five, 10, 20 years, there's so much evolution and changing, and the TF2 economy is its own little microcosm, its own little universe that's always evolving as well. And right now, trade bots are really, really big. So a great real-world example of how trade bots and uh, automated services in general have changed in economy is looking at the real economy. If you look at the U.S. stock market, back not too long ago, you had actual people on a trade floor. It was called the pit, and these traders would be shouting. If you look up old videos, you'll see these traders on the floor yelling to buy and sell, and you know they're trading thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of dollars. They're trading thousands of shares. They're basically with a pen and pencil and a phone, and they're yelling across the room, and they're you know, pushing each other around, that was trading. You had an actual person who had to get a call, get a buyer to place an order, get a seller to buy the order, and do it manually. It was kind of like that in TF2. You had to join a trade server or trade someone, send a trade offer, and negotiate. You had to add them to friends, and you'd kind of have this back and forth. You would haggle the price. That's too low. That's too high. Well, this guy's selling it for this much. And it was kind of fun because there's way more room to make profit there's way more wiggle room. You could add suites. You could do different things. And it was more of a personalized engagement. Now, a lot of the cheaper items, you know, strange scatter gun, MVM parts, uh, paint, keys, refined metal, are pretty much dominated by these bots. So it's kind of hard to make profit because there's so many people listing them for a certain price that are going to auto sell or auto buy that there's no point of really trading those anymore, at, you know, person to person. Another thing to remember is that bots and trading for TF2 are not new. Ever since the Steam community market came out, ever since Marketplace.tf came out, and a lot of these other websites and services, when you buy something, you don't actually buy it from Valve or Gaben, right? You buy it on the Steam market and a bot sends you a trade offer. The same thing on Marketplace.tf or a lot of these websites selling skins or war paints or whatever. You, when you buy something or sell something, you're trading with a bot. There's no person there. So these have actually been out for a while. This is not something new. What is new is a lot of people, individuals, are making their own bots because it's pretty easy to do. Although it's kind of a hassle to manage depending on what you're selling. You know, tons of backpacks full of Reft or MVM parts or strange whatever item. It's kind of annoying so I personally wouldn't run a bot because the profit margins are so small. However, most trade bots are not doing the unique niches. So if you look at, you're selling uh, craft numbers, signed items, unusuals, rare items in general, uh, spelled items, any kind of niches that you can think of, that's where you actually work with a person and you can trade with a collector, you can trade with someone else who is really interested in those specific items, like people like to collect specific effect or specific hats or cosmetics or misks in general, like I used to collect exquisite racks, and that's all about negotiation. Along with really hurting the low tier market and the cheaper items, it's also hurt people who are just trying to make a little bit of profit, squeeze it out of things because you can always jump on the classifieds or look at marketplace or whatever and just look at a bunch of bots and buy for the cheapest one. So it's harder to make profit on normal items, regular items, which kind of forces people to get into the more expensive items, to spend more time looking into items that have more profit, niches, things that are more unique. So. Another downside is the scrap pinking is pretty much dead and gone. There's not going to be any more scrap to unusuals unless you want to spend a very, very long time doing it, which is kind of sad because that was a really fun, basically, space to be in where you could, you know, get a find a craft hat and trade it up and get a BMOC and a Bills hat and then earbuds and then a cheap unusual and kind of work your way up from nothing into something, which unfortunately you can't really do that much anymore because of, there's just so many bots selling for so cheap. All right, you guys, that'll wrap it up. My video on the evolution of trading and the pros and the cons, depending on whatever camp you're in and what kind of trading you do. Let me know about your opinions. I'm really curious to see what kind of trading you guys do. And do you think this is bad for trading? This is good for trading? Are you kind of impartial? Do you even care? Like I said, for myself, for middle or higher tier traders, it doesn't really affect us at all. It actually is kind of a nice thing because 
I can get any item I want instantly. Super convenient to trade with the trade bot. But if I was just starting out trading or if I was new, it would be really, really tough to climb my way up. I mean, like I said, I recommend people now to actually save up some cash money and buy keys or buy cheap items and work your way up because it's just not fun competing at the lower level anymore. There's no wiggle room for profit and there's so many items that are low, being lowballed by bots. It's just not worth the time in my opinion. And with that, I will let you guys go. Thank you for joining me as always. Just a reminder, we are creeping up on 10,000 subscribers, which is pretty awesome. And uh, I want to do a fat giveaway, a super obese giveaway. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe to help out with the YouTube algorithm. I also have a Steam group so you guys get notified. The Squirrely Squad, come join my treehouse. And hopefully I will see you guys soon. And I want to do a video on the summer update, if that's ever going to happen. Valve, wink, wink. All right, guys, until then, peace.